Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about the great women of Anglo-Saxon England. We'll be starting off with Emma of Normandy. Emma of Normandy likely has one of the most impressive pedigrees in the history of British royalty. She was the wife of two Anglo-Saxon kings, Ethelred the Unready and King Canute, and on top of that she was mother to two more Anglo-Saxon kings, Hartha Canute and Edward the Confessor. She was also a key power player in her own right. Today we'll be talking about how Emma of Normandy came to England and married King Ethelred the Unready, how King Ethelred lost his kingdom to Canute, but Canute made Emma a Queen of England a second time. We'll talk about her battle with a usurper named Harold Harefoot, and finally how Emma helped to bring about the rise of King Edward the Confessor. Emma was probably born in the late 980s. Her father, Duke Richard the Fearless of Normandy, would have lived in a Mott and Bailey castle which served as both home and fortress to the Norman aristocracy. While Emma would have been surrounded by fine tapestries and entertained by jugglers and singers and would have never wanted for food, her surroundings would have also been dark, damp, and utterly foul from the moat around the castle which often doubled as a bathroom. Her childhood did not last long. The once dormant Danish raiders began coming again. The Danish raiders began using Norman ports to refit and provision their ships for further attacks against England. King Ethelred the Unready of England became desperate to pry the Normans away from the Danes, and he was willing to offer Duke Richard of Normandy generous terms. So, when Emma was just 12 or 13 years old, her father, Duke Richard, married her to King Ethelred the Unready, the Lord of Anglo-Saxon England and a man 20 years older than her. In AD 1001, she arrived in England and married Ethelred, taking the Anglo-Saxon name of Elf Gifu. Ethelred ruled over a huge court of a hundred or more clerks, huscarls, falconers, and hangers-on. His court traveled throughout Anglo-Saxon England, escorting the king as he moved from one royal estate to another. It was a tightly knit band that was famous for its poetry and music, and Emma and her small French-speaking Norman entourage would have had a very hard time being accepted by Ethelred's court. While married to Ethelred, Emma had at least three children, Edward, who would become King Edward the Confessor, Prince Alfred, and a daughter named Godgifu. The alliance between England and Normandy did not put an end to the Danish raids. Now, during the first wave of Viking invasions about a century prior, many Danes had settled in England, becoming farmers, tradesmen, and merchants, very much a part of the fabric of Anglo-Saxon society. But since he was unable to defeat the Danes on the battlefield, King Ethelred instead took his anger out on his own Danish subjects, very mature of him. Emma's name appears on royal charters as a witness on a number of occasions, but if they were done in the years soon after her arrival, Emma of Normandy probably didn't understand the royal charters that she was witnessing and which had her name on them. One of those documents could very well have been the royal order which commanded the deaths of King Ethelred's Danish-born subjects. During the ensuing St. Bryce's Day Massacre in 1002, Danish-born men, women, and children were put to the sword. In Oxford, Danish families broke into St. Frideswide's Church for Sanctuary, and the local people then burned the place down and the Danes with it. We don't know for sure how many Danish-born English subjects died on November 13, 1002, but one of them was Gunhild, sister of the Danish king Swain Forkbeard. And Swain Forkbeard of Denmark used St. Bryce's Day as an excuse to take the whole of England in one fell swoop. Swain Forkbeard was a fierce pagan who had no qualms about burning churches, and when he received hostages from prominent Anglo-Saxon families, he often sent them back with their noses and ears cut off. So what was Emma of Normandy dur doing during the war? While the image of an armor-clad warrior maiden chopping up her male counterparts on the battlefield is fashionable in modern media, powerful women often played a very different role in medieval combat. 
Now, men were expected to be brave and aggressive and combative, which are great in war, but not very good traits in a peacemaker. However, women's roles as mothers and wives made them highly effective peace weavers who negotiated truces and lasting treaties between quarreling factions, often led by their respective husbands and fathers. And that is a role that Emma would have to play often. In 1016, a huge Danish army led by King Canute, the son of Swain Forkbeard, overran much of England. Emma was faced with the first of many hard choices. Should she stay? Should she go into exile? She ultimately made a split decision, sending her three children to Normandy to keep them safe. As children of the former king, they would be a direct threat to King Canute, and he might very well kill them to keep his throne safe. However, Emma had no estates or means of support back home in Normandy, but she did have land and title in England. So she remained in England, making peace with Canute when it was clear that the Anglo-Saxons had lost the war. By the time that Ethelred the Unready died in 1016, he had indeed lived up to his name, completely losing throne and crown to the Danes. However, with Ethelred's death, Canute smelled an opportunity. If he married Emma, then he would make his hostile takeover of England look a lot more tasteful to the English by linking the old and new dynasties. But there was just one problem. Canute was already married to Elfgifu of Northumbria. So Emma turned peace weaver, and she negotiated a solution that Elfgifu would keep her estate and her titles and her money, but that any children Emma had would take precedent over Elfgifu's children when it came to the succession. And one can only imagine that Elfgifu's sons would not find the solution pleasing. Regardless, Emma married King Canute sometime in 1017, and she had two more children with him. She had a daughter named Gunhild, who married the son of the Holy Roman Emperor, and a boy named Hartha Canute, who would later become King of England. However, the price of this peace and queenship was that she never had the chance to see Edward, Alfred, or God Gifu, who lived as exiles with their uncle Duke Richard II of Normandy. As Queen of England under a second king, Emma played a prominent role as an advisor. To help smooth Canute's transition from King of Denmark to King of England, Emma often counseled him to change as little as possible. The Anglo-Saxon nobles, at least the ones who hadn't been slaughtered in Swain's invasion, kept their land. The laws remained largely untouched, and the churches went unburned, assuming they hadn't been burned in the invasion. Indeed, Emma even convinced King Canute to make himself more acceptable to his English subjects by converting to Christianity, and in time both Queen Emma and King Canute would become generous donors to churches. And King Canute even gave England one of its Christian parables. On one occasion, King Canute was said to have taken his throne out to the coast, planted it among the waves, and sat there. When his puzzled Danes questioned him why he was sitting among the waves, King Canute explained that he was comparing the power of a king to the power of God, and since the power of a king was not enough to even stop the waves from lapping on the shore, it must be considered that the power of God was a thousand thousand times greater than that of the greatest king. Emma and Canute reigned until Canute came down with a slight case of death in 1035, which proved to be terrible for his political career. Once more, Emma of Normandy had hard choices to make. Now, she wanted one of her sons to become king, either Hartha Canute, her son by King Canute, or Edward, her son by Ethelred the Unready, by then 20 years in his grave. However, there was a third royal brat in the mix, Harold Harefoot, Canute's son by his first wife, Elfgifu. Erold and his mother Elfgifu worked hard behind the scenes, bribing the Anglo-Saxon nobles with gifts of silver in exchange for supporting his claim to the English throne. Sensing the situation getting away from her, Emma wrote to her sons Edward and Alfred back in Normandy, urging them to challenge Harold Harefoot before they lost their kingdom a second time. Edward and Alfred's invasion attempt was a disaster. Somebody tipped off Harold Harefoot's men, and they were waiting. 
Edward and Alfred were ambushed on the road soon after they arrived, and though Edward was able to flee back to Normandy, Alfred became Harold Harefoot's prisoner, and to make him unable to take the throne, Harold's men jammed red-hot pokers into Alfred's eyes to blind him, and he died from his injuries a couple of days later. Emma herself fled to the court of Baldwin V of Flanders, and being the savvy politician she was, Emma immediately published a letter claiming that she knew nothing of this invasion and she would have counseled against it if she knew anything about it. However, Emma worked tirelessly behind the scenes to promote Hartha Canute, her son by King Canute, as the next king. She even commissioned a history subtly called In Praise of Queen Emma, in which she declared that Harold was a bastard born to a servant girl, and in that history she also claimed that the letter inviting Edward and Alfred to seize the English throne was just a forgery created by Harold Harefoot. As you can see, Queen Emma was quite the politician. Politician. Now, fortunately for Emma, Harold Harefoot died just a few years after taking the throne, and Hartha Canute sailed to England, where he took the crown without serious opposition, and one of his first acts was to restore all of Emma's lands and titles to her, and she became Queen Dowager of England. This likely marked the peak of Emma's power, as she also gained control of the English treasury. She even set herself up in the state palace at Westminster. Unfortunately, Hartha Canute died in 1042, and Emma brought her firstborn son by King Ethelred, Prince Edward, to England to become King Edward the Confessor. But just a few months later, Edward showed his mother his gratitude by storming into Winchester with a few hundred of his friends, all heavily armed, and he seized the treasury for her. Edward's ingratitude to his mother, who put him on the throne, was a tremendous scandal. Why did he do this? Perhaps Edward the Confessor was afraid that Emma would interfere with his rule. Maybe he had a grudge against her for sending him into exile and not seeing him for almost 25 years. Edward the Confessor may have even been worried about so much land and power being in another person's hands. In any case, Edward completely forgot the role that Emma played in getting his bottom on the throne. Some months later, though, Edward did reconcile with his mother and restore Emma's lands to her, to his credit. However, he completely shut Emma out of politics, and Emma basically went into retirement, focusing more and more on religious devotions and financing the construction of new churches. Emma of Normandy died in 1062 and was buried at the State Palace at Winchester. However, before Emma died, she may have pulled off one final coup. The year before her death, Emma arranged a meeting between her son, Edward the Confessor, and his cousin, a man that you may have heard of, Duke William the Bastard of Normandy. While we don't know for certain, the Norman chroniclers maintain that during this conference, King Edward the Confessor promised to make Duke William his heir if he had no children. And if that is true, then Emma isn't just a savvy political operator who prospered through 40 years of war and upheaval, but one of the most consequential women in English history, as she would have provided Duke William of Normandy with the excuse that he needed to invade and conquer England in 1066. And that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.